So we created this video to show you how to film with the Glidecam as far as tips, tricks, and just a whole tutorial on everything that we've learned over the last 10 years. We want to give as much information as possible with everything that we've gathered and give it to you guys. So we're not holding back, we're sharing everything that we've learned. So watch this video as many times as you need and the biggest thing though is once you learn these things on the video, you actually have to go out and apply it. It's just like riding a bike. The more you do it, you get it down, and then once you have it down, you remember it for the rest of your life. All right, without any further ado, let's get started. We have the Glidecam 2000, HD 2000 right here, and then we have a 5D Mark III, and then a Canon 16 to 35 millimeter lens. Now, the way I set up this camera, it's gonna be different if you have a completely different camera or a completely different lens. So right now, I have the plate. We stick it on the second hole, I'm not sure the technical term, um, we'll just call it a hole for today. And then we're using a couple washers on the bottom, we have two right here. And then right now I'm tightening this, and then I just make sure it's perfectly level or even with the lens. So this line is parallel with the lens. I usually don't have a screwdriver on set, so I'll use a quarter to tighten this. For this setup, we use three weights and three weights on each side. And we actually have it, and there's different ways, there's different preferences for everybody. But I have it closed as much as possible. If you want though, you can go longer or shorter depending on how wide or long your actual camera is. For us, we try and keep the camera as small and condensed as possible because we, we try and get super low as possible. And if we're really long and extended, we can't do that. Um, but for this setup, this setup works really well. So I got this, I'm gonna assemble this on here. Bear with me patience my friends so that is on there and then I go ahead and put this on and then as you just saw this tightens and adjust so roughly I'm just gonna guess for this setup it's usually around this height and now I put the 5d on here we go ahead and tighten that so everyone's gonna have different preferences on how to balance their glide cam this is what I do um, so if you don't like the way I do it that's fine but this is what works for me I'll start here and I'll lift up the glide cam it's lifting forward this obviously is not gonna work if I want to be really smooth because this is what's gonna be happening so I lift it I know it's forward so I need to basically push this plate backwards so it balances out this plane. So I first have to make sure that this is level with this way. I've seen some people actually shoot like this. Some people shoot like this. I do it like this where it's parallel with this. The reason for that, what we shoot a lot of times we're running full speed. So as I'm running, I don't want another axis to worry about as far as hitting something, rubbing against something. If it's parallel with the camera, I know what I'm seeing is where this is gonna be in movement. So the glide cam, it has several different knobs. It first has these knobs that are kind of in the middle, here and here, they're on both sides. Loosen those up just a little bit. And these are basically, these are what tightens the plate from sliding at all. And then you have this knob, which controls the glide cam sliding backwards and forward. And then you have this knob, which controls the glide cam sliding left or right. So first, I'm gonna balance it going forward or backwards, and it doesn't really matter what way you do it, that's just normally the way I do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift it up. It's front heavy, so I'm gonna start rotating this to the left, counterclockwise. And what I'm doing right now is I'm literally sliding this plate backwards so it won't be as front heavy. And once you set your glide cam up the first time, you don't have to spend as much time balancing it over and over again. I just completely offset it. So now it's a little back heavy. So I'm gonna go ahead and spin this. Now it's not gonna be balanced yet because we haven't done the left and right. So now I'm gonna set it down on a kind of a flat surface. This isn't perfectly flat, but this is realistic as far as being out of the middle of nowhere. A lot of times you're not gonna have perfect cement. So I have it somewhat level, I lift it up. Now it's not really going forward or backward right now, so that's pretty good for now. So now I'm gonna balance the left and right. Okay, so now I have it forward. I'm gonna lift it up. Now it's leaning right, as you just saw. I'll do it one more time. Lift it up, it's leaning right, so now I need to go ahead and balance it more to the left. So this is a plate. Now down here, these screws tighten left and right. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen these so I can slide the plate over a lot easier. So I'm spinning it now. I'll set it down on the ground and lift it back up. 
it's kind of leaning backwards. And as I adjust this plate, forward and backwards gonna change slightly a little bit as well. So I have to be prepared for that. Lift it up. And now it's becoming back heavy again. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate it forward again. Lift it up. We're getting close. Do it again. It's starting to go this way. So that means I need to just basically tell it to do the opposite of what way it's going until I get it at the perfectly even spot. So now it's a little back heavy, sit down. So we're pretty much where we need to be. Now I have in the past balanced the glide cam, gone to turn it on and then realize there's not a memory card in it or a battery. If you forget that stuff, you're gonna have to rebalance it again. So make sure you have your battery in it and the memory card because that's a, a move I've done many times. So I started with the Glide Cam 2000 is what it was called back in the day. Now this, this is the HD 2000 um, with the DSLR cameras. And we've been working directly with Glide Cam. We're like, what can we do to come up with the ultimate Glide Cam that would fit all of our needs as far as Team Super Tramp to get the shots that we want to get in super remote places. So this is what Glide Cam did. Let me take this off the plate just to show you guys. Because this is actually something I'm pretty stoked on. Is there's only, I'll hold it right here. There's only two knobs to adjust anything on here. And you tighten them because these are really tight. Um, you don't have to have anything that locks anything. So I can change this left and right. This changes it forward and backwards and it's already locked into place. And then you just have your lock to lock the tripod plate on. Drop time, it's all, well it's not all, but a big part of it is personal preference. For us personally, we like around 1.3 to one and a half seconds. So I'm gonna drop it. And when I say drop time, it's from here to there. So how long it takes for the base to drop. And that's roughly one and a half seconds right now. So some people prefer the drop time to be two, three seconds. We personally prefer it to be around one and a half to one second. So it is a matter of personal preference. Some people like a little longer. I wouldn't go anything shorter though than one second regardless. So right now we've already balanced the glide cam. It's not swaying left and right, and it's all about the horizon. If, you, if your horizon is changing left and right, and that's the hardest thing about it, if you can balance your horizon, the rest of the shooting is going to be significantly easier. So I already know the camera's not going to sway left and right, so that problem has been solved. The second problem as far as getting smooth shots, if I'm shooting on a super tight lens, like a 70 to 200, that's going to be very, very hard not to have the camera already swaying because you're so close. The wider the lens you use, the easier it's gonna be to make your shots stable or steady. So we're shooting on a Canon 14 millimeter lens or a Canon 16 to 35 millimeter lens, which is normally set at 16 millimeter. The wider we are, the more in focus it's gonna be and also the more stable it's gonna be because it's gonna be significantly more forgiving. So the next question is, what hand do you use to hold the glide cam? What hand do you use to control the glide cam? So I'm actually left-handed. So my dominant hand, the hand that has the most control is my left hand. So that's the hand that I have free as you see right now. So that's the hand I'm using to actually control where the glide cam looks. And then my bad hand or my weaker hand, even though that's the camera holding the weight, that's the uh, hand that actually holds the camera. Now, I've seen a lot of different people hold the glide cam a lot of different ways. People hold it like this, people hold it like this, people hold it like this. You can say it's a matter of personal preference. For most of the people that I work with though, we all hold the glide cam with this in the front, slightly to the side. So let me kind of show you from a couple different angles. Boom. Boom. Um, this, when I hold it like this, for me, it's a lot harder to hold and I feel like I'm starting to shake. Now, as far as what happens with this hand, my dominant hand, um, if I'm holding it like this and holding it like this, that's the same thing as doing it handheld. So you never want to hold it with both hands because you're defeating the whole purpose of glide cam. You want to be controlling it just by literally tapping it. So right now, let's look at Carter for a second. He's holding the boom pole. Hi Carter, wave, wave to everybody. Yeah. So I'm gonna film Carter. So right now the camera is on Carter and as I walk around Carter, I'm slightly tapping the actual glide cam itself as we spin. Now let's say, I, okay, now I know I'm gonna go back. So I'm gonna kind of let go for a second and then I'm gonna start tapping it again. So the way I walk with the glide cam is generally speaking, the more things you have bending, the smoother your shot's gonna be. So if I'm walking with my legs stiff, 
this is gonna not, it's gonna shake a lot more. If I'm kind of like a trampoline where it's taking in all the shock, this is gonna be significantly smoother just like shocks in a car work, same principle. So when I walk on different surfaces, what it comes down to is the softer the surface, the more I generally will try and bend because if I'm walking on sand, I'm gonna sink. So if I have more things that are actually bending, I'm able to adjust and take more shock. Um, so if I'm walking on sand, I'm gonna be a lot more loose, but shooting on sand is the worst. It's the hardest to do because you sink so much. So just a lot of practice over time, you'll get it. So then the question is, well, I'm starting to run. There's a lot of wind uh, resistance. My guide cam is kind of swaying back and forth. So then what it comes down to is just as you're running, I'm controlling it with my offhand, um, left and right, I'm just tapping it back. If it starts going this way, I start tapping it this way, back and forth, back and forth. And you'll notice like in our Assassin's Creed videos, which we'll, we'll show right now, is I'm constantly adjusting this to make the shot as smooth and as steady as possible. Um, I'm not just running like this and hoping for the best. I'm controlling it with my offhand to get what I want. So the other common question we get is how do we have things always in focus? Generally speaking, if I'm shooting landscape, I'll focus for about 10 feet in front of me because we're already shooting wide angles, so most things are already going to be in focus. So I'll literally just say, hey, we have that flower right there. It's 10 feet away. I'll zoom into that flower. I'll put it in focus. I'll zoom back out and then I'll shoot the landscape shot and everything's gonna be in focus at that point. So that's how we do landscape stuff. We don't change the focus while we're shooting landscape because it is wide angle. Everything's for the most part already in focus, at least the foreground. Now, if I'm shooting people, people are constantly changing as far as all of a sudden you'll have someone to run really close, then really far away. Generally speaking, when we shoot people, we're shooting an f2.8, so it's a lot more shallow depth of field, so more things are gonna be out of focus. So the way we make that work is I'll set my focus to the person, the subject matter, and then I'll keep that distance the whole time while I film them. And then if I do decide to get in close, I'll get in really fast and then I'll change the focus. So I'm gonna show you exactly what happens when I shoot someone. So right now we have Carter as our model. Ta-da, and he's holding the boom pole mic. Um, so right now I know I'm gonna shoot Carter and I'm gonna film this right now on this camera so you can see exactly what's happening. So I'll zoom in really fast. I'll get focus on Carter. Hi Carter, smile. What's up guys? And now I'm going to walk around Carter. And what's happening is I'm keeping the same distance, smile Carter, from Carter as we spin around Carter. Now if I get in close, he's out of focus. So I'm gonna grab this, put it in focus. And now I have the boom pole in focus. And then I know I'm gonna walk out, so I'll walk out and then I'll change focus really fast. And we're shooting on the fly, so we're doing everything super fast, and everything we shoot is generally documentary. Now, it's out of focus, so I'll change focus really fast. But we're never, generally speaking, I'm never pulling focus and walking in, because as I do that, the glide cam goes off balance. So that's what it comes down to when we pull focus, is I'm constantly changing it, but we're editing the parts that are out of focus as we're making that quick adjustment. So that's why it's like, oh, how do you pull focus? Well, we're cutting the parts out when we're actually pulling focus. So as far as going from, let's just say we had like a skyscraper here. If I want to go from that to a bunch of people eating food right here, um, literally the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to point the camera up. Then this is how my hand's going to be. And then I'm going to start tapping it lightly as it goes down to the table. So I go up like this. And then I'm going to come down and I'll slightly turn the camera to the table with the people eating. Where do your eyes go when you're filming with a glide cam? There's no right or wrong answer for this because my eyes are kind of all over the place. I'm constantly looking where I'm walking, especially if it's somewhere dangerous. I'm constantly looking at the monitor and I'm constantly looking at the subject matter to see where they're moving. So if I'm filming, let's just say a snowboarder that's hauling, and I'm snowboarding with him, I'm looking down right in front of me, and I'm looking at the snowboarder, if, if it's that case scenario, I'm usually not looking at the monitor because I, it's just too many things happening. So as I'm filming the actual athlete, I'll be looking where I'm going, and then sometimes I'll glance at that monitor, but I'm just glancing on the right side of my eye as the athlete's going, because they're moving so fast, I don't have time to look all over the place, so. Let's say I'm running over a whole heap of rocks. My focus isn't gonna be on the monitor. It's gonna be on where I'm running. 
and then it's gonna be down here to where this is looking. If it's pointing that way, that means the camera's probably not pointed at the athlete. So I'll be running, jumping from rock to rock. Same principle applies, my legs are bending as much as possible, especially when I'm jumping from rock to rock to get those really smooth shots. So I'm looking at the monitor, I'm looking at the subject matter, and I'm looking where I'm walking. If I'm filming somewhere very dangerous, I'm mostly looking where I'm walking. So when I first started doing these videos, I wanted to make it look like it was a huge production. And it was just me and my 5D at the time, Mark II actually. And a lot of people started asking like, how did you get those helicopter shots? And then I had to let people know, well, we actually, we didn't have a helicopter at all. All I had was a Glidecam 5D Mark II and a Canon 16 to 35 millimeter lens. Now what happens, on, on those cameras in a wide angle lens is it kind of shows the perspectives of if you're flying when you are on a glide cam. So I mean, I did shots where I looked like I was flying over a waterfall and a lot of that what happened is like if you're shooting like on a waterfall, it's very dangerous. So what I do is I'll get to the, the actual location. I'll walk through it four or five times without my glide cam. Once I'm used to that, once I'm comfortable with that and I know what's slippery, what's not, then I'll get the glide cam out and then I'll actually shoot it. And because I've walked it so many times, I'm already aware of the surface. And I'm actually not looking, especially when you're filming at dangerous places with the glide cam, you wanna know where you're walking more than what you're shooting. So I'll actually look more where I'm actually walking instead of the actual monitor itself. Because when you're shooting those situations, it's much smarter to be safe than sorry. But the more wide angle you shoot, the more it does look like you're flying because it has more space that actually travels past the camera. So it looks like you're going a lot faster than you actually are. For us, we're trying to get shots that you're not used to seeing. And that means putting the camera super low. Now this system, as far as the older glide cams, when you turn the glide cam upside down, I'll just show you an example. Because it's not balanced for that, it turns back upright. So we're like, what can we do to make a system that's really fast, really efficient, so we can start shooting without having to put screwdrivers in and basically change the whole system. So glide cam is the only one in existence. They allowed this so I can go straight from high mode to low mode. Now I don't have to worry about it flipping upside down and I can start shooting right away and have super steady shots. Okay, and start walking pucker. And for me, I feel the most interesting shots are having things fly past the foreground because it just makes things look a lot faster and a lot more dramatic. So this is a huge deal for what we're doing because we can do everything on the fly with no tools. And the system, it locks into place and it works super well. So this glide cam comes with a quick release plate, which most people, they'll get their glide cams, it won't have that, so they actually have to spend roughly around $50 to actually have a system that's similar to this. So this comes with the actual system. It's taking everything that's great about these glide cams, the glide cam HD 2000 and 4000, and adding to it. Now the other big thing for us is, we're, I mean, right here I have the Red Dragon camera, but we're also shooting on the 5D and several other cameras. So this system right here, because of this movable gimbal, you can have up to two to 12 pounds anywhere within that range, and you don't have to get a completely different glide cam. So I can go from shooting with this camera, then I can put a 5D on here, and then I can actually put a GoPro on here if I add a couple weights up top, disclaimer right there. But I can go from any camera setup that I can think of that we use, and we don't have to use a different glide cam. We don't have to go from a 2000 to 4000. Essentially, this is a 4000 pole, um, but I can use the whole array of systems. And the only thing I had to change if I'm changing the cameras is the amount of weights that I'm using down here. So the reason we don't use the vest or the arm for the glide cam is a couple of different reasons. One of them is it gets pretty heavy, so hiking into a spot is not your ideal situation. The other thing, and the most important thing for me, is we're often running through crowds of people, and if you have a big arm, you have to kind of dodge not only yourself and the camera, but the arm that's kind of sticking out. If you're going through walkways, it's the same principle. So, bike cam for me, it's been the game changer. It's allowed us to get shots that compete with Hollywood. It's made us look like we had a full crew when it was just one person. So it's been the game changer for us. It's allowed us all these amazing film opportunities. So glide cam, what it comes down to, it's like riding a bike, spend time on it. The more time you spend on it, the more you're gonna get it down. The things we talked about today, like I want you guys all to learn about it. So if you have any other questions, like I am still accessible, contact us on Twitter, on Facebook, leave your questions. And if we haven't answered it on this training video, we're gonna do our best to answer it there. So thanks for watching. Other than that, over and out.